Hello, Craft Warehouse followers. Today, um, we're going to go ahead and make this fun little mountain scene necklace. So I did go ahead and I laid down a little scratch protector on my block. You don't have to do that. Um, it's just a preference. Now, I am using our brass one inch piece today and one of our aluminum ones. The aluminum one is going to be what I stamp our mountain scene into. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So this set has one big mountain and then two little caps on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, oops, actually I'm going to take this straight tape and I'm going to make sure I have my blank nice and secure where I want it. All right, so now I'm going to take this mountain and make sure that engraved mountain is facing me when I'm stamping. So I'm just going to plop it where I want and I'm going to hit it once and then I'm going to tilt this just slightly back, forth, side, side. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to be just tapping my hammer. So let's get started. All right, so I got a nice good impression there. And then I'm going to take one of my snow cap sides. So when I'm looking at the stamp this way, that is the way your cap is going to come off. So don't be alarmed when you're stamping and see that it's going a different direction. You just want to make sure that engraving is facing you. Again, I'm going to do that tilt and tap method. Just because these are so detailed and I want to make sure I'm getting all the detail on them. And then I'm going to do my other side for a snow cap. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop this one down a little bit further. On the same side. And just tap it on in again. And then I'm going to come in low with this one as well. I think I might put one more on this side. Okay, so the best thing about this is, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see. No matter how many times I stamp these mountains, they're always gonna be uniquely different. And that's so great, because nobody wants to have two pieces that are the exact same. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy off and I'm gonna move my block to the side, just so you guys can see me cut through this. So I'm just going to have a handy dandy tool from the, our tool shed and I'm just going to snip this metal and make sure, you know, you're trying to angle down so your metal pieces aren't flying everywhere or hitting anybody or yourself. We wouldn't want you to poke an eye out. We also have these great uh, metal shears from Impress Art as well. They're probably a tad better than my shed tool. Okay. Again, when I'm cutting this, I do want there to be some edge around the mountains because I'll get in there and get a little bit finer cut with my flush cutters. So I'm just going to snip and you want to make sure there's an edge so you have something to buff down. 
and you're still getting to see your stamp. Otherwise, if you did it right up against your um, design stamp, you're gonna lose that design of the mountain. So I'm just kind of going in there, getting all those fine areas that those bigger metal shears won't get into. And this will, this piece is going to be sharp and we will file it down though. So don't be alarmed if you're like, oh, this is so, so sharp. I don't know about this. We have a solution. Okay. So I got mine all trimmed out here how I want. I'm just going to bring this block back over. And we're going to go ahead and use that buffing block. So you got two medium sides here and two coarse sides. So this is a their Impress Arts matte buffing block. And I'm going to go ahead and take that coarse side and I'm just going to file down on the edges. And I do also come up kind of rounding the edges out a little bit and making sure there's nothing sharp on the back side so that it'll adhere well to our piece. And on the edge of the mountain, I kind of round those pieces out. So it kind of goes with the flow of um, our stamping blank that we'll glue it to. Getting in those little nooks and crannies. Again, I'm filing down and up to make sure I'm getting both sides of that, making sure there's no metal flakes that would possibly poke or hurt anybody. And that backside, I want to be flat so that it's adhering to that stamping blank. When you guys are doing this also, don't forget You'll have to file down your peaks a little. Otherwise, those could be a little sharp as well. And I wouldn't want them to um, get caught on any clothing. I could see it getting caught on your, your necklace getting caught and then possibly breaking the necklace, which we wouldn't want. So I'm just filing those tops down. So it's nice and smooth in how I want it. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that to the side and then I'm going to grab that blank and I'm going to take that medium and I'm just going to buff it. This is a preference. I'm just wanting this to look a little bit less shiny, a little bit more organic to have that explore Pacific Northwest um, mountain vibe. So I think you can see how I got some shiny part and this is all getting unshiny. And then you're going to see on my finger, I have this dust. That's all from buffing the mountain in this. So don't be alarmed. You can just rinse it off. That's a part of, you know, taking off metal particles. Your This buffing block is, you know, buffing those away, taking it away. So you're going to have a little dust, just like when you're working with wood. Okay, so I got that buffed out the way I'd like, and I'm going to go ahead. I have this nice little stamping guidebook, and it has some circles in here. So I already have one ready, and there's a little hash mark. So in between each hash mark, I did go and put the word explore. So I'm just going to line that up where I want my words to go and put it right there. So this is a preference again, but I find it easiest if, if the word is at the top, so I'm pulling my letter down versus pushing it up if it was this way. So again, I like my letters to be at top where I'm working. If it goes all the way around, I do just rotate it as I work, but this will, I only got it on the one side. So I'm gonna take that straight tape again and I'm just gonna tape down my blank nice and secure. So I am using the Willow Signature Set. It's a nice 
it's a lower case, um, but it does have those more bold letters that I like. So let's set this here so I can see. We're going to start with that E. Again, engraved letters on these are lifesavers, so you know which way you are stamping. So you want that E facing you as you're pulling it down. And you're going to pull it and it'll catch on that paper. Pull, it catches. Pull, catch. And then you want to make sure your stamp is nice and flat. And then just one good hammer. And then just keep continuing. Again, pulling down. Catch. Now, I have a P. And I want the P to the like tail to come down further than the rest of the word. So if I was just to go down and catch it, it would be taller than the rest of my letters. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to catch it and then just lift it down a little bit. So I catch and down, catch and down. And you can do that with your Y's, your G's, um, any letter that you want to be a little bit further down. Also, if you are wanting your letters to alternate, like up, down, up, down, you can do it that way as well. Having a stamping blend, uh, guide and you hit, you know, all your top letters are on, are hitting the stamp guide and then you drop your lower ones down just like we did that P. Okay, I'm almost done here. So one thing I do want to point out, if you are having a hard time um, when you're stamping and your letters aren't coming out clear, I would definitely suggest, um, oops, sorry, my hand's a little wobbly there. I definitely suggest taking a metal stamping blank and just stamp out every single letter on this. So in doing that, you're going to get a feel for how hard you need to hit your stamp. Also, you're going to get a feel of how they should be laying um, flat against here because if you're getting only partial letters, it's because you're not keeping it nice and flat. Um, another thing, if you're wanting to work with more coppers and brasses, it is a little bit more heavy. You kind of got to give a little more oomph um, when you're stamping, so I would suggest um, practicing on one of those bracelet blanks as well, just a few times to get comfortable. Okay. I have my blank all done, and I'm just going to pull this away. And then now I'm going to go ahead and fill in with this black enamel marker my explore and my mountains. You do not have to do this, but I just like to my letters to be really bold. And again with my mountains. And I waited to do my mountains until now because I was getting in there and cutting away that metal. Sometimes that enamel, when it's so fresh, will stick to my hand and I didn't want that okay so again just kind of letting it dry so there's one thing I found that really helps when you are taking away any access enamel I really suggest taking your paper towel and just tapping it blotting it getting most of the access and then just a good wipe I've noticed the um, enamel marker stays in that engraved letter or design much easier. Again, I'll do the same here. I'll tap and then I'll wipe away. And wipe away. All right, so I got my nice little mountain range there. So we're gonna go ahead and glue this on here. I'm gonna kind of, I want my mountains to be kind of close to my explore so I'm gonna plan to set it right there 
Now to set this, I'm just going to take that GS Hypo cement glue and I'm going to put it on the back side of that mountain. And I'm going to go ahead and close this back up. It has a nice little needle, so it just slides right back in there. What I like about this is it helps from getting any dry glue in your needle. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that right where I want. I want to make sure it's lined up nicely with that edge. Okay. And then again, you're going to need to let it dry, making sure that glue gets nice and secure. And then you can go ahead and put it on um, a necklace. So just take a nice little jump ring. If you have not worked with jump rings, I always suggest having two pliers. It makes it so much easier. Open it. I'm going to go ahead and attach this ball chain I have here. Maybe it's all tangled. Okay. I'm going to attach that and then I'm going to go ahead and attach my design and then just closing it up. And there you have it. Cute little Explorer necklace. Now you could easily make this into a keychain as well. Um, or if you don't like this empty space, you could also maybe have a little, um, take a head pin and have a little gemstone dropping down. That would be really cute as well. But, all right, thank you for joining us and have happy crafting.